PyHall is a Linux network level advertisement and internet tracker blocking application which act as a DNS sinkhole and that can also be used as a DSCP server. This is a great option for home users looking to block ads without the need to install an expensive firewall application such as a Cisco firewall or Palo Alto firewalls. PyHall is a package that can be installed on almost any Linux distro and in this demonstration, we will be using Ubuntu uh, to install the PyHall. Before installing anything, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we have all the updates and everything done on this system. So I'm going to open up the terminal. And in this terminal, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it's easy for you guys to see. Uh, I'm going to run two commands to make sure that all the packages are up to date. So that would be sudo apt update and I'm going to ask for it going to ask for the username uh, sorry administrative password so I'm going to enter that So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to check for any upgrades. Uh, so I will clear this. So I'm going to go sudo apt uh, upgrade. And I'm going to press enter. I'm going to say yes. And that's going to go through anything that any packages that need to be upgraded. So this is something common that you should do with any uh, uh, Linux uh, distributions. You just need to make sure that every package and everything is updated uh, because before you installing anything, it is always a good idea to go through these steps so that way you will avoid any dependency or compatibility issues. So make sure you run through that. As you can see, there are some updates available for me. So I'm going to run all of those uh, before we proceed. So once we have updated our system and upgraded all our packages, next thing we're going to do is we will uh, see how we can install the PyHall. Now to install PyHall, we need to have a package called curl uh, install first because it depend on that to get that installation package. Uh, so typically all uh, Ubuntu distributions already comes with the curl install, but if you want to make sure it is installed, you can do sudo apt, in, uh, apt apt install uh, curl. So you're going to see URL and press enter. And that will make sure that you have the curl package installed. So right now, it's going to go and check for any curl packages. And if it is available, it's going to get installed. So curl is already installed typically again. But if you're not sure if the curl is not uh, in installed or whether it's installed or not, you can just simply run that uh, sudo app uh, install curl and Ubuntu and that will get that curl package installed. Now, the next step is to install the PyHall. To install the PyHall package, uh, we're going to enter curl. So C-U-R-L and we're going to put dash SSL. So make sure it's um, this is a simple S and it's ca capitalized S and capitalized L space HTTPS colon double slash install dot pi dash hole dot net and -E and we're going to pipe it. So the pipe like that with the line like that and then going to put space and bash. So it's curl dash S and then capital SL https colon slash slash install dot pi dash hole dot net and it's a pipe command and then bash. I will leave these commands in the description of this video so it would be easier for you to just copy and paste it so that you don't make any mistakes. So it is important that for example you have this S capital and L capital otherwise it won't be able to uh, get that information. And once you have entered that uh, press enter. What it's going to do, it's going to go and try to find that package uh, from the PyHole uh, database. And this is what it's going to get you. So it's going to say root check. Uh, and then it's going to come up with uh, asking for a pseudo password. If you forgot to 
put the sudo uh, in front of that. Uh, my password. And there you go. So this is what uh, gonna get you install the PyHole. So they found the PyHole package and now the PyHole installation uh, window will appear like this. So this is the first step. Uh, we're gonna say okay in here. So we're gonna press enter and uh, it is an open source software. So it's gonna give you some information about open source information and may ask for some donation, but you don't need to make a donation. I'm just saying, you know, there will be some information related to that open source software. I'm gonna press enter. And in here, it's gonna say uh, it needs a static IP address to function it properly. Uh, so right now I don't have a static IP address, but it doesn't really matter uh, for the, this uh, demonstration purpose. But if you are installing this on, uh, for the first time, make sure your local machine have a static IP address. So you can, for Ubuntu, it's very easy to set up a static IP address. You go to the settings here. Uh, so if I go to settings, uh, right here so if you go in here for the settings and in the settings uh, if you go to network uh, you can change this wired ip address right here uh, for ipv4 for automatic dscp uh, to manual and then in here you can create a static ip address but uh, for me right now i'm not going to use the static ip address. i'm just going to stick it with the dscp but uh, it is recommended uh, that you use a static IP address. The reason being is that by using a static IP address, you make sure uh, that you know the PyHole IP address not going to change every single time the server get boots up or uh, something uh, changes on your network. So, for example, I can stand ch change this to a static IP address. For example, one nine two one six eight one dot five. Uh, and then you can put submass 255.255.255.0 and I can put an, uh, you know, the, the gateway IP address in here, 192.168.1.3, for example, two, for example. So whatever your, you know, static IP address. So that's what, uh, that's what this warning is about. Again, I'm not gonna set up a static IP address, but I recommend that if you are setting this thing up, you go to the settings of your machine and go to the networks, and then uh, change this, uh, uh, you know, D D if you have a DSCP IPv4 and change this to a manual and pick a static IP address within your network IP address range. So that's the first step you need to do. And the next thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna continue. So press C and then uh, you will be greeted with the upstream DNS provider uh, selection. Now, you may ask the question, why do PyHole even needs an IP up upstream DNS? Your PyHole doesn't know by default uh, anything about DNS. In fact, PyHole is doing what we call a DNS sync calling, but it is not a DNS server itself. So what happened is the system on your network, a computer or a server or a device, ask about a domain. So it's try to retrieve a domain the, what the PyHole is going to do uh, as a, uh, you know, the DNS sync call, it checks against a block list and see if it finds that domain there. And if the block list doesn't have that specific domain requested, then it go and fetch that domain information from a upstream DNS provider. So if the domain isn't in the block list, it goes out to the upstream provider and asks that domain to be served. So the PyHole itself doesn't contain a DNS list itself. What it contains is a block list for the DNS. So every single time a device asks for a, a website, the PyHole check against the block list. And if the block list doesn't have it, it goes out to the upstream DNS provider and then retrieve that for you. Now you have a couple of options for this. You have the Google DNS, Open DNS, which is a Cisco provided uh, Open DNS, and there are a bunch of other DNS uh, providers you can use, including Cloudflare, Flare, for example. And you can also choose to go with a custom uh, DNS uh, service provider as well. So if you pick the custom one, for example, you will have the option uh, to custom uh, create the DNS, uh, the upstream DNS, but for now, I'm gonna go with the Google. For most of you, 
I would recommend that you go with the DNS provider, uh, the upstream DNS provider for Google. I would go with the Google upstream DNS provider because that would be the most reliable uh, and the most widely used uh, public DNS uh, provider that we have uh, today. So I will go with the Google one, which is the default one uh, for PyHole uh, configuration as well. So I'm gonna press enter. And it's gonna give you a block list information. So it's gonna say PyHole relies on third party list in order to block ads. You can use the one that already uh, suggested uh, by the PyHole, which is the Steven block list, or you can choose to not to do it. So for any typical home user, I recommend that you go with the default block list, which is a Steven block list. Uh, so your PyHole installation itself can use you know, use any block list available, uh, or you can create a custom block list. But if you're installing for the first time, it is recommended going with the default block list, which is a Steven block list, which is basically a huge text file type of thing uh, that contains multiple web addresses that are um, related to ads and tracking uh, that being fed feed into uh, your uh, PyHole installation. So we're gonna leave it as it is. So we're gonna leave the, it as in the uh, Stevens block list. And we're gonna press uh, yes and then uh, or enter. So we're gonna select yes and press enter. And then we're gonna, uh, the next step, they're gonna ask you whether they should install the administration web GUI for your PyHole. Unless there is a need to conserve resources on your uh, Linux uh, distribution uh, where, where you are installing PyHole, I would always install the web uh, uh, UI. The only reason you'd go no here, if you want to conserve or save some space. For example, if you're installing this on a, uh, let's say a PyHole uh, device, you may want to say no here just to save some you know resources because there's limited resources. But typically, I would recommend that you uh, install the web GUI because that will give you a nice uh, user graphical user interface that will allow you uh, to interact with PyHole and configure it the way you like it. So I would recommend hitting yes in here. So we're gonna select yes and press enter. And it's gonna say a web server is required for the administrative interface. So do you want to install the uh, light, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, TTPD? So it's basically, uh, sorry, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the package, it's a PHP package that required to run the web applications associated, associated with the PyHole. So that's what they're asking whether you should be installing it. For here, you need to definitely say yes and press enter. And then you're gonna ask, uh, would you like to enable uh, query logging? Uh, I typically leave it as yes here as well. So that will allow you to do some debugs and things like that. So I will leave it as yes. And in here, uh, the next one you're gonna say, uh, select the privacy mode for the FTL. So uh, you can uh, select uh, you know, the default. Uh, I typically keep it in the default. I would keep it as show everything. Uh, but you can select the hide domains, hide uh, domains and clients, and you can also select the anonymous mode. Uh, typically for home users, uh, because most likely you are a home user who's watching this video, I would recommend just keeping at everything. So I'm gonna leave it as it is and press continue. And what that's gonna do now is, now it's gonna go and try to install those packages uh, that we need to run PyHole. So it will take a few minutes. Depending on the speed of your computer, uh, or server, as well as the speed of your internet connection. So this is it. This is pretty much done in terms of installation process. Now, this is a very important screen because this contains some information that is really important for you to be able to log into your PyHole installation. Uh, it contains your IP address, which is the IP address for this computer, which is 192.168.26.5. It contains information about how to log in by clicking here. And what's really important is the default administrative password for your web GUI, which is this, this item. 
So it is very important that you save that information. So you can either take a screenshot uh, or uh, you know save this information somewhere else. So you can also write it down. So I'm just gonna open a notepad. Uh, let's see, all right here. So I will be uh, opening up a like a notepad or like a document. This is just a, a LibreOffice, I believe. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, uh, copy that information here so that I have that information, uh, you know, saved. You can take a screenshot, you can do whatever. The reason I'm not taking a screenshot here is because I need uh, uh, this information again and again to log in. You can change this password once you have logged in uh, to your uh, PyHole. So I just, uh, you know, set that information here so that it's easy for me to figure out. Uh, and uh, let's go and log in. And so this is the information I need. So it's K U um, for me. It is underscore K U M G Z B M K U M G Z B M with the underscore at the front. But for you, it will be some random randomized name. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, so that's why you need to, you know, just make sure the password what it is. So in here, you can click OK after you know, uh, you know, you can log in. So before we click OK, I'm just going to click on this link. Uh, that should uh, open uh, the uh, the application here, the web application here. Uh, but if it doesn't do that, uh, you can open the web app, uh, your uh, browser. So it could be any browser. So I'm going to open the uh, Firefox here and I'm going to type this uh, link. So I click on it. It didn't open. It's sometimes open. It sometimes doesn't do that. So because of that, I just open the web browser and I'm going to go HTTP uh, colon slash slash 192.168.26.5. Uh, slash admin and press enter and there you go now we have the pyhole install uh, this is the pyhole overall view uh, of the uh, the the web gui uh, the, uh, the home domain uh, home view of the web gui uh, this is not yet logged in to logged in what you do actually on the left hand side there's a login button and we're going to click login here so here they will ask you the password for your PyHole. Now remember the password uh, that we have saved uh, from the terminal. You can either go back to the terminal and read it from here. Uh, I just copied here so I can uh, simply copy and paste it here. So I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna go back to the web GUI and I'm gonna enter that password. So I simply paste that password and I, you can say remember this for the seven, for seven days if you want to choose to do so. Uh, and then we're gonna go log in. And I'm just gonna save it here as well. So this is basically the PyHole itself, uh, the web GUI. And you can see on the top right hand corner that we have 136,768 items on a block list added to this PyHole. If you are wondering where this come from, uh, this is from that uh, Steven uh, block host list. So remember during the installation process, we decided to go with the default block list already added onto this PyHole installation. And that default block list, which is the Steven block list, it contains 136,768. So this number may be different for you because they keep adding items or and removing items from that list. And because we have selected, opted to install that list, uh, into this PyHole, uh, you will see this number. So this is just in case you install, you just install the PyHole and you are wondering where this number come from and where this list is coming from. And on the left hand side, you can see a couple of items uh, that you can go through to fine tune uh, certain configurations. Uh, you can whitelist items uh, as well. So if there is an item in the block, block list that you really don't uh, want to be blocked, uh, you can whitelist just that item uh, or a list of items here as well. And there are a bunch of other uh, configurations options in here, uh, which I will go through in details later. Uh, but for now, uh, you know, we will just, uh, you know, uh, skip past this. Uh, just remember, uh, you know, the default block list is good enough for most home users. So I may post a separate video uh, later sometime with going into advanced settings of the PyHole but this is pretty much good enough for most home users. Now, the next question you may have is, you have installed PyHole and everything seems to be working, but how can I get your home computers? How can I get your home devices 
uh, onto this spy hole uh, DNS sync calling. So how what you need to do in this situation is to uh, make sure that the DNS or domain name servers for your devices is directed towards this IP address. So for example, if I go in here uh, and type uh, double click dot net, which is an ad uh, site, if I click enter, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go to the Google marketing page. The reason why it did that and it didn't get blocked because the double click dot net uh, is used by Google uh, for uh, serving ads and it, it's not blocked right now because the DNS of this uh, Ubuntu machine is not set to this pie hole. So you need to go through your uh, devices and computers and servers at your home that needed to go through this pie hole uh, for ad blocking and change the DNS settings. So how can you do that? In this Ubuntu machine, I would go into the settings. So I will go in here, type settings. And in the settings, I will go into the network uh, section. And in the network section, I have only one connection, which is the wired connection. I'm gonna click on the cogwheel right here. And I'm gonna change the IP address associated with the DNS for IPv4 uh, onto the IP address of this spy hole. So in here, the pie hole IP address is gonna be the same as this IP address, which is the IP address of this machine. So I'm just gonna simply copy that. And if I go to IPv4, I'm gonna turn off the automatic and I'm gonna put it uh, that IP address. So 192.168.26.5 uh, and I can click apply. So if you go, uh, one more, sorry about that. If you go back to the settings, so you go in here, as you can see, it's 192.168.26.5. That is a pie hole IP address. That is the IP address of this device. And we basically point at the DNS to that device as well. Another thing I will do is I'm not gonna use IPv6 anyway. So I'm gonna make sure the IPv6 is turned off because I don't need it. And that will remove any complications uh, that may come up uh, and you know could cause the malfunction of the pie hole. So you, I would disable IPv6 and I'll just leave the IPv4 turn on and point the DNS to the uh, pie holes uh, IP address and click apply on all of your machines. Uh, now you have done that. Another thing you need to make sure is you need to make sure that you have not accidentally turned off your pie hole or somehow the pie hole is turned off. So just make sure at the to top here, so she says uh, it is disabled. So make sure you go in here and make sure it is turned on. So it's enabled. Now, if everything goes according to plan, uh, every, you know when you try to access these sites that you shouldn't be uh, be able to access, you should be you know get a, a block uh, message. If you have been using the computer for a long time, uh, and uh, you know uh, because of that you need uh, you know you have some DNS cache. Uh, happening on your device so it's not going to go through the pie hole itself what you need to do is go to the terminal and enter this uh, resolve uh, flash caches what that's going to do is that going to make sure that any cache dns cache will be cleared from your device and um, just to check it out uh, let's put a, a known uh, uh, website uh, onto the block list so if i go to block list I can add an individual entry uh, to the block list. Uh, so let's use a domain. Uh, so let's say HTTP uh, colon sonage.com. I'm just gonna try to, you know, uh, yeah, I mean sonage.com. I just want to test. I'm just gonna call it test block sonage. Uh, so I'm just gonna add, um, you know, domain as a wildcard. That means basically anything associated with sanjay.com where they slash something in here or something right here, uh, like that, it'll still get blocked. So that's what I mean by wildcard. And I'm gonna add to block list. So see, it has this specific regex uh, method that it added. So basically sanjay.com is now, uh, you know, blocked and it is enabled. So you can turn on and turn off here. And again, I will go through in depth how this works. And now if I go in here and I type HTTPS uh, 
call and uh, sanuju.com or just type uh, sanuju.com it doesn't really matter uh, what's going to happen uh, you're going to get blocked so right now the reason why it's not being blocked because there's cache in this browser so if i refresh it see it got blocked so you might not get the block uh, at the very beginning uh, when you first set it up as just happened here uh, you may have to like refresh the page from now on if somebody try to access this site uh, let's say i go here and go sanuja.com what's going to happen is it should get blocked because this web browser has some cache that's why it's not doing that properly but eventually once the cache get replaced you won't be able to access any of these things like for example right now this front page is, has been cached but if i click in here see it get blocked right now so same goes for like double click uh, so if i go click.net which is the one uh, in that from that list it'll show up like this it's a google um, double click uh, you know ad serving site and if i refresh it see it got get blocked so it will take some time on your network devices uh, to figure out uh, that you know this thing has been enabled and you know for the pie hole to like you know serve those pages directly so uh, it might take a while so it doesn't mean that your pie hole is not working it just basically means you know uh, it's going to take some time uh, for those dns caches to get uh, cleared now uh, you know if nothing uh, you know is working if there's something wrong uh, with the system you can also clear the caches on each of your individual compo uh, uh, you know devices such as for example for linux and ubuntu you can run the resolve uh, uh, ctl uh, flash uh, caches that will actually clear the cache on the system itself as well itself as well so once the pie hole has been running for a while and the devices are now communicating if you go to the main dashboard you will get a lot of information like ton of information it will have how many clients that are connected right now it shows two clients connected it will show you how many um, items have already been blocked block percentage uh, and some other information in here uh, and this is live like if i actually open a, a new uh, window here uh, and if i try to make it smaller uh, so let's see uh, so let's make it smaller and if i try to go to reddit for example see this number change uh, if i go to uh, sanuja.com for example see this number change again that because of this is you know showing that blocking information live so again like i said the reason why I still can access some of these sites because there is some cache within this web browser and cache on the operating system, cache on the system that needs to get cleared. But over time, like after a couple of days, uh, every block uh, on the pie hole uh, should work now as long as you are following the correct uh, instructions. So this is what you get um, as a result once the system has been running for a little while. So that's everything for today's tutorial. If you find this video very useful, please make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, thank you so much and have a nice day.